Well, we appreciate our singers and players, don't we? They do a good job. I think they've been practicing most of the day, working on, man, they, they got their faith on being more powerful and sharper. You better watch out. You know, they come in here, you know, next thing you know, and open up on a song, and boy, you'll be blowing your hair back. So, <laughs> somebody say, bring it on. Uh, you know, it's wonderful the tools we have now with the internet and the TV, and there are different uh, directions whereby the anointing carries more into these mediums, uh, and we're believing for that. Would you believe with me yes. that every part of the service? Now we're we're not going to change and become outside building minded for the service and that we're trying to put on a show for somebody. Amen. That's, that's not going to happen. Uh, that's not the purpose of this. We're inviting people in. Yes. Right? Yes, From all over the world. And though, besides that, though there is wisdom and grace the Lord is tweaking us, and He's going to tweak us so the anointing comes stronger and stronger and stronger through the camera and through the TV and, and through the Internet, right? That the anointing will just come right in, come right into people's rooms, right? Into their offices and their bedrooms, and man, they'll, they'll think they're sitting here, Right? And even you know, it could be stronger than for some people sitting here. Depends on what's going on in their life. So that's what we're believing for. And there is no distance in the spirit. Time doesn't matter. God is everywhere. And he can manifest anywhere when people believe him. Would you turn with me to Proverbs this evening? Book of Proverbs. We began a few weeks ago on a new series on our Friday nights that we're calling The Wisdom of God. The Wisdom of God. If you'd turn to Proverbs 4, we're going to read our text again, and ushers, would you take the aisle? And if you didn't bring a Bible tonight, Raise your hand, our ushers will let you use one of ours. Maybe you got three or four at home, but you didn't bring one. Raise your hand, use one of our Bibles, make an effort, take the time, turn and find the Scripture, let, it, uh, let your eyes rest on it, let it get in you. And let's believe tonight that the Lord speaks to us specifically, powerfully. You know, if I just have my eyes on you, then all I'll get is you. If all you got is your eyes on me, then all you get is me. Hmm? And that just ain't enough. Right? But if I look to him, and if you look to him, you know, and I see you, but I'm, I'm looking to him. You see me, but you're looking to him. And you're hearing what I'm saying, but more importantly, you're listening with your heart to what God is saying to you. Revelation will come. Answers will come. Direction will come. How many believe the Lord could speak to you tonight? Speak to you specifically. Right? And give you answers and give you direction. So let's pray that way right now. Father God, I, I do. We, we lift up our hearts and our voices to you in this prayer. And we say our eyes are on you. You are our God. You are our teacher. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the living Word of God. Give us eyes that see and ears that hear, and hearts open and receptive. Let there come revelation of truth. Let there come a supply of the Spirit in our individual lives. Answers, help, grace, direction, enablement, spiritual equipment for the task and the job, and the days ahead. And we receive it by faith, 
And we're not hearers only, forgetful hearers. By your grace we are and will be doers. And we know as we do, we will be blessed because you're so faithful to watch over your word and perform it in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're going to believe with me tonight now? It's not just all up to me. And uh, this is not just for the people in the room. Now you've got to be believing with us too, watching my internet and TV. You're believing because utterance affects you. God will tailor some things just for you. Proverbs, the four, fourth chapter, is our main text for our study now on the wisdom of God. Proverbs 4. He begins in the first verse saying, Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Attend to no understanding. Let me tell you something that will help you in reading this. Don't just think natural father and son. That is an application, but the greater application is the Father God and you. He, like your, as your father, is telling you and me to no understanding. He said, I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and he said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Everybody say it out loud. Get wisdom. Then he said, get understanding. Do what? Get, get it. What about wisdom? Get it. get it. What about understanding? Get it. get it. Who's the understood subject? You. Get it. Right? Ne forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth, Forsake her not, and she shall preserve you. What will preserve you? Wisdom. Wisdom. Love her, and she shall keep you. What will keep you? Wisdom. wisdom. God's wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, what? Get wisdom, and with all your getting, get Understanding, can you see a recurring theme here? What is it? Get it. Get it. That sounds like something that we have a responsibility to do. We must not just float through and think and, and hope it'll fall on us uh, and, and hope God will notice us and just, you know, have pity on us and give us some wisdom sometime. We must be hungry for it and we must reach for it, right? Now, if you, if you were here previously, we've already gone into some detail about how we get wisdom, how we get more wisdom, how we develop in wisdom, and one of the big things was you must hunger for it. We read in passages where it said wisdom is crying, crying out loud, saying, come here. Now, for lack of a better word, dummy, come here. I said, dummy. Yeah, it said simpleton. You simple ones, <laughs> come here. Why? I got something for you. You ain't got to bump along through the rest of your life being dumb and clueless. Come here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> right? The Bible said wisdom is crying and saying, come here. Come, come, get what I got for you. And then we read later that it said, you must lift up your voice and you must cry after wisdom. You can't be passive. And it can't be a slight thing to you. You must hunger and desire. Say it out loud. I hunger for wisdom. I hunger for wisdom. Now I don't know if you realize it. But that is one of the big problems. I, mean, I can go over this in three minutes. But the truth is. Most of the body of Christ really doesn't care. That's the reality. If it would fall on them. Yeah. Now, do you know why I stop and say that? Because it's easy to just preach and make a point and keep going. But what good does that do if we're not doers? If you want wisdom, if you want to grow in wisdom, what must you do? You must hunger and desire it. So your spirit must cry out for it. 
And it must become something that you must have. You are unwilling to go through a day without the wisdom of God. And every time something comes up and you have to make decisions and you have to choose between this and that and you have to say, do I do it, do I not? You do not just rely on what's in your head. But you look to the greater one. You say, Lord, there's wisdom for me for this thing and I'm crying out for it right now. I got to have it. Let me, let me have it. I'm getting my wisdom. I'm here to get it. Right? Are we charged to get wisdom? And get understanding. It's our responsibility. What if we don't have it? Well, it's not God's fault. He's provided it. It's available and He's told us to get it. How many know He wouldn't tell you to get it unless it was there to be got? He wouldn't tell you to get it and you run up and say, I'm here to get it. He said, it ain't here. (laughs) Ain't none here. (laughs) Of course not. If He said, get it, if mama rings the bell and says, come and get it. That means something's on the table. Yes. Right? Yep. And when he says, come get it, that means wisdom is there. Yep. Understanding is there. Yes. The plan of God, the revelation is there. Yes. You can get it. I can get it every day. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Let me give you some definitions. We'll review a little bit for those that haven't been with us. Uh, What is wisdom? Well, let's look at the contrast. What is being a fool? What is being foolish? Well, uh, the word translated fool and foolishness is the word we get our word moron from. (laughs) And it literally means dull, heedless, simpleton. Dull and heedless. Well, you know, we we laugh about it, but it basically means you are unaware. You just blare on through life, and you don't know what's going on and why it happened or where you came from or where you're going. You just don't know. Fools are continuously surprised. (laughs) They're like, wow, I didn't know that was going to happen. If I had, I wouldn't have done that. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was what was going to happen. I wouldn't have said that. Uh Uh-oh. Wow. (laughs) Fools are unaware. And they find out about everything after the fact. So by contrast, what's wisdom? Well, the word wisdom, the word for wisdom literally means skillful. Skillful. And it has to do with being skillful with what you are aware of. We said knowledge is not wisdom. And this is something that our modern, in our modern educational system has really kind of skewed. People, are, you know, they, they make much of knowledge and don't say enough about wisdom. You can be a walking encyclopedia and be a fool. Having a lot of knowledge does not make you wise. Are you with me? You can know all kind of stuff. You can be able to spout all kind of facts and figures and info, and that does not make you wise at all. In fact, I've done a little study along this line, and it's something about how many so-called geniuses commit suicide. And so they just had too much smarts in their head. They were just too wise for their own good. No, they weren't wise at all. Because one of the biggest fools on the planet is like the psalmist says, the fool that says in their heart, there is no God. When the Bible says the knowledge and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the holy is understanding. So you don't even get started in real knowledge and understanding and wisdom till you believe in God. Until you respect God. Right? So wisdom is being skillful. You know, in in Handling what you know and what you understand. Knowing what to do with what you know. 
Listen to these uh, scriptures. The Bible said in 1 Kings, talking to an individual, says, You are a wise man, and you know what you ought to do. That was 1 Kings 2.9. You're a wise man, and you know what you ought to do. Ecclesiastes 8.5. Ecclesiastes 8.5 says, A wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. A wise heart knows the proper time and procedure. Amplified says, a wise man knows when and what to do. It's not just knowing stuff, but it's knowing how to use what you know. Right? It's not just understanding, but it's having the grace of God to know when to talk and when not to. When to act on what you know and when to wait. Right? How to do it. How much of it now. So many problems are self-inflicted. Right? Just, you know, sometimes you can be right about what you're thinking, but your, your application of it is so totally wrong, and your timing is so off. Right? No wisdom about when and what to do with what you know. Are you hungry to have more of the wisdom of God in all of your dealings? To know what to say, when, how to say it, how far to go with it and when to stop, and when to pick it up, start again, right? When to pick up the phone and call, when you've said enough, when you need to keep going. How would you know all these things? There's only one way. By the Spirit of wisdom who lives inside you. Can you say amen? Amen. But we have to look to him and appropriate or access or get this wisdom all through our day and night when we need it. Now let me review a little bit further. We talked about, uh, we asked the question, what is wisdom? We've already reviewed that some. We talked about where wisdom begins. We talked about wisdom and understanding. We talked about being teachable. Do you remember that? That the wise man or woman is teachable, correctable. A a fool despises instruction. You can't tell them anything, much less correct them or rebuke them. They won't receive it. But a wise person will love somebody who rebukes them in the right way. Hmm? A wise person sees the value of instruction and always wants more. A wise person sees the value of correction. And even a rebuke and says, thank you for pointing that out to me. If you hadn't said that, I don't know how long I'd have gone on thinking wrong. And is there anybody here or anywhere else who never needs to be corrected? That was a little weak. (laughs) Is there anybody in this building who's all already knows everything they need to know about everything and is right about everything they have to deal with and never needs to be corrected? No. No. So then why should it be such a shock if you get corrected? And why should it be such a negative thing? Oh, I got corrected today. They rebuked me. Well, how long has it been since your last rebuke? Oh, I don't know. I think it's five years. And you're doing wonderful. (laughs) But see, people don't think like that, do they? (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) See, correction is not a popular thing. Fools despise correction. Now, you're not a fool, are you? I'm not a fool. So, we appreciate correction. We value instruction. Say it out loud. Lord, what I don't see, show me please. What I've not understood, reveal to me please. What I'm wrong about, correct me please. I'll receive it. 
I'll value it. Thank you for it. Now, you've got to be able to receive it through whomever he would use. <laughs> you, you, you can't be too picky. I mean, I'm a, a fella that's starving for water, right? Needs water. I mean, he's dry. Somebody comes and hands him a big cup, and he looks up and goes, Nah. I want the water bad, but I don't drink from fat cups. <laughs> now, I, I lead the water bad, but I don't drink from white cups. Uh-oh. You <laughs> hear how quiet it got? It's just like, <laughs> oh, I need the water bad, but I, I don't drink from uneducated cups. <laughs> I need the water bad, but I don't drink from rich cups. Hey, you better forget the cup and get the water, right? Just say, hey, thank you for using any cup, right? And getting me what I need. And give God the praise and give Him the glory and receive it gladly, thankfully. So go ahead and say that out loud. By faith, I'll receive through whomever, anyone you choose. All right, be ready. Be on the watch. And it's a good thing. It's a positive thing. Well, let's, let's go on. Go with me to Job, the 28th chapter. This is such a, a, a huge, great subject. We're believing the Lord to just focus on the points we should tonight. I want to go a little bit further about where wisdom comes from. In Job, can any good thing come out of Job? Yeah. Boy, there's all kind of wonderful things in Job. But you know, if you don't look for it, you won't see it. If you read Job and all you look for is pain and suffering and it's not God's will to heal me, then that's all you'll have eyes to see. And it's not there. But you can try to make it up. But you know, if you, if you look for healing, you can find it in almost every chapter of the Bible. If you look for prosperity, you can find it in, all over the place. If you look for deliverance, look for victory. Some people read the Scriptures and ignore the blessings and just look for the woe, woe unto thee. <laughs> Don't be so selective in receiving. Look for the good. God's a good God. In Job 28, he's describing the wisdom of God. Job 28, let's begin about verse 12. He says, where shall wisdom be found? Where can we find it? And where, this is Job 28, 12, where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Let you stop right there. Is there anywhere on the planet where you can go and get wisdom from a natural source? Is there any university? No. Wisdom is not found in the land of the living. The depth says, it's not in me. The sea says, it's not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither can silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir and with the precious onyx of a sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention will be made of coral or pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies." The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. One aspect of wisdom is understand, well, I shouldn't say that. Understanding has to do with knowing what is valuable and what is not. And then wisdom is properly using 
that understanding. But is wisdom valuable? Oh, it's so valuable. It's, it's worth more than any amount of money. Keep reading, verse 20, whence then comes wisdom? I mean, if, you can't, if there's no amount of money that can buy it, if there's nowhere on earth where you can go pick it up, where can you get it? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it's hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowl of the air. Destruction and death say, we've heard of the fame thereof with our ears. <laughs> but you can't find it in death or destruction. God understands the way thereof and he knows the place thereof. We ought to already be happy because we know God. Amen. And he knows where it's at. Right? So if you know somebody who knows where it's at, you can get some. <laughs> you don't know, but he knows. He knows where it's at. He looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds, and he weighs the waters by measure. Now here we begin to see the Bible tells us that God created everything that he did by his knowledge and by his understanding and by his wisdom. It's how he laid the foundations of the earth. It's how he kept the oceans from washing over the land. It's why they stay at the shoreline. It's why the vapors arise and the cycles of the clouds and the rain and all those things. It's because he did it with his understanding. Now, this is so significant because as our understanding increases, we're going to be able to do some stuff we never thought we would do. I'm not just talking about in this life, but in the next. And it's not just going to come from osmosis automatically or just sitting on a, a cloud playing a harp, but we're going to be learning. Oh, come on now. We're going to be learning and we're going to be increasing. In knowledge of the holy, which is understanding. You know, people talk about evolution, evolving. Somebody said, well, Brother Keith, don't you believe in evolution? No, I do not. I believe in devolution. What do you mean? Devolvement. Don't you believe, Brother Keith, that man has evolved, you know, from the goo to the zoo to you? No, I do not. That we ran around with clubs and grunted at each other? No, I do not. There's a reason why these missing links are missing. It's amazing. People forget about the theory, theory, theory of evolution. You know what a theory is? Brother Hagin used to always give his definition of a theory. I'll give it to He said, a theory is a supposition based upon ignorance of the subject under discussion. <laughs> if you knew, it wouldn't be a theory. It's a theory. It ain't a fact. It's taught as a fact, but it's not. Somebody said, uh, Brother Key, you mean you don't believe in evolution? No, I do not. Man has not developed and evolved to where he is now. Man has fallen and devolved to where he is now. Adam, God didn't make Adam and Eve grunting cave men and women. Adam is called the son of God. God came down in the cool of the day and communed with them and they communed with him on his level. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we, 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 we don't really have a clue. Adam and Eve would sit out there in the garden in the cool of the day and watch the sun set and Adam would say, God, how'd you do that? And he'd explain it to them and they understood it. Oh, come on, come on. They understood it. They're like, yeah. Don't you remember God brought all the animals to Adam? And he said, ugh. 
Adam, what is this? Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Preposterous. Adam had such insight and understanding into the creation of God that he had the wisdom to call this creature what it should be called. He didn't just name them Tabby and Buffy and... No, he named them what they were. And it perfectly described them. He looked and he said, He's not just looking and go, oh, it has spots. <laughs> he sees how God constructed the sinew and the skeletal structure and the way the eyes work and the way the tufts of hair uh, pick up the, the sound and the way the nostrils move. And he said, giraffe, giraffe. God said, that's good, that's good. <laughs> That's exactly what he is. Giraffe. Let's get another one. Do you understand? Man has devolved to the place where they grunt and live and act like animals. Today. Well, it's not going to stay that way. God is going to restore. There's going to be new heavens and new earth, right? We've been talking about on Sunday, the kingdom of God is going to be established. And you and I are going to do what? We're going to rule and reign. How many know God is not training a bunch of dummies and fools to rule and reign with Him in the kingdom in which there is no end? This is faith school. We're being trained. This is one of the briefest things we'll ever do. This life is one of the briefest things we'll ever do. And we're being trained and we're being taught to develop in the knowledge of God, the understanding of God, the wisdom of God. Skip on down. You're there in the 28th chapter. He talks about how God made weight for the winds. He has weighed the winds and he's weighed the waters. God knows to the ounce what the Atlantic Ocean weighs. Why? Because he understands. He made a decree for the rain, a way for the lightning of the thunder. We hadn't even figured out how to catch one yet. <laughs> if you could catch a lightning bolt, you could power a city for months. We ain't been able to build anything that would hold one. Just one. He saw it, he declared it, he prepared it, yea, and he searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Well, oh, did you get this now? People looking for wisdom, trying to find it, ain't enough money to buy it. How do you get it? The fear, the reverence, the honor, the worship, the respect of the Lord, that is wisdom. You are already started down the road. When you revere God, you worship God, you honor God, and to depart from evil is understanding. Run away from sin. Run away from disobedience. Run away from rebellion. That shows you have some understanding. Can you say amen? amen. Now let's keep going. We talked about in order to get more wisdom, we must desire wisdom. Here it says wisdom's not found in the earth, but God gives wisdom. Listen to uh, Job 38, what, 36. Well, you're close. You can just turn over there if you want to. 38, 36 says it like this. It says, talking about God, well, the, the Lord was asking Job some questions. And he started out by saying, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? You're talking, but you don't know what you're talking about. So he started asking him some questions. Let's just read some of them. 38, 3. Gird up your loins like a man, for I'll demand of you and answer thou me. Now you'd have had to read the things that went before to understand this, because Job had gotten out of line. Job railed against God. 
And he, he questioned God's fairness and justness. And he said, I wish God would answer me. <laughs> well, he did. And he showed up. And, he, and instead of saying, okay, Job, I know you have some questions. And I'm here to answer your questions. No. No, that's not how he works. It's not, I'm going to explain it to you so you can understand. And then you're going to believe me. Absolutely no, never no. You trust him and you honor him when you don't have a clue. Yeah. So I said, well, if God would make me understand it, then I'd trust him. That's absolutely faithless. Anybody can do that. You've got to trust him when you don't know. It's, it's not, you know, people talk about seeing is believing. There never was anything any more backwards. No. You believe, then you see. Now here he said, he said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? I don't remember seeing you. <laughs> he said, where, he said, on what are the foundations fastened? What did I fasten the foundations of the earth to? And uh, who laid the cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together. Did you know the stars sang? Glory. Who shut up the sea with doors uh, when it broke forth as if it issued out of the womb? And, I mean, he goes on and on and on. And what he's saying to him is, you don't have a clue how I did any of this, and yet you think you can stand and tell me I'm unjust, I'm unfair, you have enough understanding to question my justice? No, he said, you don't understand, you don't understand creation 101. <laughs> you don't understand the basics of what I've done from the beginning, and you're going to question me on these biggest issues and accuse me of being unfair. No, you don't have to understand to believe. He said, verse 36, who has put wisdom in the in the what? Verse 36, who has put wisdom in the inward parts or who has given understanding to the heart? Where does wisdom come from? It comes from God. It's initiated by the respect and reverence and fear of God. And it doesn't come just into your mind. It comes into your inward parts. It comes into your heart. Wisdom is not mental. You can't read enough books to get wisdom. Wisdom is the gift of God. It's the grace of God, and through wisdom, you know what to do. Without figuring it out. You just know what to do. You know what ought to be done, and how it ought to be done, and when. Say, thank God for wisdom. God puts it in your insides, in your heart, in your inward parts. Let me read from another place. Psalm 51 says, In the hidden part you make me to know wisdom. Talking about Solomon in 1 Kings 10, it says all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. How did wisdom get in him? God put it in him. What part of his being did he put it in? Not his head. His heart. It's not talking about your blood pump now. You don't believe God with your blood pump any more than you believe God with a kidney or a lung. Anybody know what the heart of a watermelon is? That's the part I always eat first. <laughs> What's the heart of a pine tree? The heart of an oak. It's not a blood pump. What is it? It's the core. It's the center most part of it. That's what this is talking about. The core of your being. Your heart. You're not just a body and a mind. You're a spirit. You have a soul. Right? And God puts this wisdom as a gift from Him and grace from Him in your insides. Would you like to have more manifestation of it? Well, we can. I said we can. And we'll go ahead and say by faith we will. 
Now go with me, since we touched on this, go with me to Second uh, Chronicles. Second Chronicles. And the first chapter. There's a man we just saw referred to by the name of Solomon. And everybody knows Solomon was wise. Right? How did he get so wise? Well, he went to school a lot. Huh? Nothing wrong with education now. I'm not saying that. But you can go to school all your life and be a fool. Is that right? How did he get to be so wise? Well, he read a lot of books. Mm -mm. Let's go back and remind ourselves of when it happened and how it happened that he became so wise. Second Chronicles, the first chapter. Are you there? Second Chronicles, chapter 1. And verse 10. Well, let me back up to verse 7. In the night, God appeared to Solomon and said, Ask what I shall give you. Solomon said to God, You've showed great mercy to David my father and have made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let your promise unto David my father be established, for you've made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. See, that gives you insight into what it is, doesn't it? So I'll know how to conduct myself. And I'll know how to lead this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Did he value wisdom? Did he, of all the things, I mean, God shows up in your bedroom. Right? And says, ask anything you want. What do you want? This is what was the strongest thing on his heart. God, I got to have wisdom to know how to lead this people. Wouldn't it be a different earth if every prime minister and every king and every president, that was the strongest thing on on their heart and mind? God, give me wisdom to know how to, and that's why we pray for our president regularly, right? For wisdom. So, God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you didn't ask for riches or wealth or honor, or life of your enemies, or long life for yourself. But you ask for wisdom and knowledge for yourself so you can judge my people over whom I've made you king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. It's a grant. It's a divine grant. Not something you earned, not something you bought, not something you deserved. It's a grant from God. I and I will give you riches and wealth and honor. Now, if you read Proverbs, you realize Solomon didn't know it. He found out later that when you get wisdom, you get the other. Riches come with wisdom. He said, such as none of the kings have had, Uh, that have ever been before you, neither shall there any after you have the like. My, my, my. If you read the rest of it, do you know? He got richer and richer and richer and stronger and stronger. Does riches go with wisdom and honor? And even talk to him later about long life. And if you read Proverbs, and I trust that you, you would go ahead and read Proverbs some while we're studying about this, you'll see long life, You'll see peace, you'll see rest, right? You'll see promotion and honor, and you'll see wealth directly connected with wisdom. In fact, he told us, desire that more than the money. Desire that more than the the success and external. Why? Because you get that, you're going to get the other. The success, the wealth is a product. One of the benefits of walking in the wisdom of God. Now notice something else though. Keep reading here. You're in uh, the first chapter. 
The Bible said when God did this, I'm going to just read some, some scriptures. Don't try to turn there right now. But in 1 Kings, it said, Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. All the earth sought to get to him and to hear it. Now, hold your place here. And go back to Proverbs, we're going to see a principle that is really what I was endeavoring to get to. Hold your place there in 2 Chronicles. And go back, go over to Proverbs, the 13th chapter. How do I become wiser? Well, we've already talked about it, you must be hungry for it. You must desire it. You must ask for it. You must be teachable, correctable, right? Last week we talked about you got to watch your words, right? Here's something else. How will I become wiser? Proverbs 13 and 20. He that walks with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools, what will happen with them? Shall be destroyed. Does it make any difference who you hang with? Who you run with? Wow. It's hard to overestimate it. Let me read another translation to you. The, the English version says, Keep company with the wise, and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you'll be ruined. That's the English version. The Amplified says, He who walks with wise men is wise, and he who associates with fools will smart for it. The NIV says, he who walks with the wise grows wise. Isn't that what we're talking about? Increasing in wisdom? Becoming wiser? Here's a, here's a truth. Here's a pillar of truth. How are you going to get wiser? Associate with, right? Fellowship with wise people. Wise people. Now this is also mentioned in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 15. You don't have to turn there, but just listen to it. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 15, 33 says, Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now that's real King Jamesy. But listen to the living on it. It says, Don't be fooled. If you listen to them, you'll start acting like them. Don't be deceived, the Amplified says. Evil companionship, evil communion and associations corrupt and deprave good manners, morals, and character. If you hang around evil people, you will become more evil. So I said, oh, not me, not me. It won't happen to me. Are you saying the word's wrong? If you hang around foolish people, and that's mostly what you fellowship with is foolishness, then what will happen to you? You will increasingly become duller and more unaware and more foolish. And the thing is, sometimes these things happen gradually so that you don't see it. But somebody that hadn't seen you for a while would notice the difference. But they used to be smarter than that. They used to not act like that. Well, it's the folk they run with. So we should be greatly interested in hanging with wise people. Can it rub off on you? How about people that have faith? Can it rub off on you? Certainly. 
You sit in a room where everybody's talking doom and gloom and they're talking fear and doubt and unbelief for eight hours straight. It's going to wear on you. I didn't say you had to yield and join in, but as the hours go by. Because see, that's, that's the way your flesh wants to go anyway. Have you noticed it? Your flesh wants to talk gossip and your flesh wants to talk negative. That's the, that's the flow of this whole world. And you have, to, you have to bite your tongue and you have to put your flesh under and your feelings under and remind yourself of the Word to always talk faith and to always talk victory. And it's easier when the people around you are doing the same thing. Oh, it is. It is. I had the privilege of working in the, the healing school, healing center at Kenneth Hagin Ministries for a number of years. And we had people come in from all over the country and other, other countries that were pronounced incurable. And some of these, I, I, I was there for years, and so I saw it again and again. Some of these people, I'm telling you, they look so bad, you could hear them breathe all over the room. Some of them hooked up to machines. And, and, and if they had just fell out the chair and, and died right there, people wouldn't have been surprised because that's how they looked. But I've seen Two hours of the Word in the morning. Two hours of the Word in the afternoon. And the same thing tomorrow. And the, I have seen people like, a, like a, a bloom or a blossom in the sunshine. Just begin to sit up and straighten up. And their breathing sounds better. And they, they, by the end of the week, be 70%, 80%, 90% better. In a week's time, I've seen it again and again and again. But then some of these same people, we break for the weekend and you come back Monday and they look almost like they did the, the Monday before. And this happened so many times and I thought, Lord, what is going on? And, and the Lord spoke to my heart one time in a time of prayer. He said, so he said, while they're with you, they got their mind on me. But they go back into these unbelieving environments. And their families, you know, maybe they love them, but they just don't know. They're ignorant of these things. And they cry over them and ask them 500 times, how do you feel? Now, don't give me that faith stuff. Tell me how you really feel. And you have to be super strong in an environment like that not to be sucked back in and pulled back into just walking by sight and just defeatist thinking. So thank God for a company of believers. Amen. Thank God for a faith family. Oh, hallelujah. We can come in here and provoke one another and say, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, God's Word is true. We're going to live and not die. Every bill will be paid. And to have faith buddies that you can talk to during the week and not going to tell you all their sob story and feel sorry for me for three hours, but will talk faith. Oh, thank God for people that will talk faith. They're not everywhere, even churchgoers. Oh, but I'm believing that this bunch <laughs> is a faith bunch. And we're just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And people who come in and come around us and want to talk unbelief will just be disappointed. Because we just won't cooperate with them. And we just won't agree with them that it's terrible and impossible and can't be done. We'll just look at them and go, hmm. All things are possible to him that believes. <laughs> Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Right? And not just say it, but believe it. And say it that night, and say it the next day, and never change. Can you say amen? amen? Well, by the same token, whatever you hang around is going to influence you. Whatever you now, the Lord prompted me about this this, uh, this afternoon. We, we know that physically, you hang around fools all the time, you're going to start acting foolish yourself. You fellowship with wise people all the time. The scripture said right here, you will grow wiser. You'll become wise and wiser. 
But I think sometimes in, in our day of multimedia, we haven't realized that when we sit and watch something and listen to it for two hours, we're fellowshipping with whoever wrote this, and there are some fools writing some fool stuff. But if we sit and watch it all night, who's the fool? <laughs> I mean, you know, people do it. They say, can you believe they let that go on the TV? Can you believe they talk like that on it? I can't believe they talk like that on it. People are hypocrites. Oh, they get huffy. Somebody cuss at the restaurant beside their table. I ain't standing for that. He can't cuss around me. And go home, sit and listen to two hours of cussing on the TV. Not say a word. (laughs) What I'm saying is me, you, whoever, if we fellowship with fools... We, we, can't, we, must, we must not think that we can watch and listen to fool stuff. People, that, fools who wrote it, and people acting a fool portraying it, that we can, and just call it entertainment, and are unaffected. No, we're fellowshipping with it. Are you with me? And whatever you fellowship with, you will become like that. There was some folk a while back, they were talking about sexual offenders and sexual predators. And they were doing this study and trying to say, did they, did they think that they're watching night and day this pornography and this perverted stuff affected them in acting out this stuff or not? Well, that's ridiculous to even ask the question. You watch stuff long enough, it's going to work in you to do it. So we ought to be selective about what we sit and watch and what we sit and listen to. Why? All you got to do is ask yourself the question, do I want to be like that? If you don't want to be like that, turn it off. Because whatever you fellowship with, you're going to become. Somebody says, oh, no, it won't affect me. You're deceived. The Scripture's right. Evil communications and associations corrupt. If the Bible says they corrupt, then what do they do? They, I don't care how good of morals and standards and character that you have, you associate with this stuff, it'll corrupt it. Might not do it in a day or a week or a month, but long enough exposure, you'll start slipping. You'll start entertaining stuff that you used to wouldn't have even, wouldn't even have thought about. You'd start looking at and talking stuff and being involved and going places you never would have stopped. You know, people mess up and then they act like, I don't know how in the world that happened. It, it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. You crossed the line way back here three years ago. And little by little by little and then more and more and more, you become like what you see. You become, there's a spiritual principle that you become what you behold. The Bible says when it comes to the Lord, we, like in a mirror, beholding the glory of God, we're changed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Well, what if you behold the wrong thing? You become what you behold. It is a spiritual law. Now, notice, if this is true, and we know it is, then it's not surprising that when God put all this wisdom in Solomon, what's the next thing we see? People who had wisdom want to see Solomon. People who who were such fools that didn't even see the value of it, you know, they don't care. But people who have wisdom, they did, they traveled extreme distances. In primitive forms of travel, they it took some of them it took months, some of them it took years. But they wanted to be around this. Because wisdom recognizes wisdom. And wisdom knows the value of it and knows that association is a key to becoming wiser. 
And the Bible said all the, the kings and all the wise men of the time, they sought to hear him. They traveled to him. They went to him. They wanted to be around him. And there was a woman that singled out in particular that came. Anybody, anybody remember her? Who was she? Queen of Sheba. <laughs> That's a phrase that's thrown around today, isn't it? The Queen of Sheba. Well, turn, let's read about the Queen of Sheba just a bit. The 8th chapter of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, chapter 8. Let's see if I'm thinking right here. May just be the ninth chapter we go to. Uh, yeah, let's just start at nine. Nine one. And when the Queen of Sheba, somebody say Queen of Sheba. <laughs> when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, what did she hear about? Fame, fame of what? What was he famous for? Wisdom. Wisdom. She heard about that. She came. Everybody say, she came. she came. She came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem. And she brought a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she had come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. She didn't stump him on one thing. And she's no dummy. Are you listening? This woman is brilliant. Some say, well, how can you say that? I, I can see the, what she values. I mean, she's got it made. She's a queen. She's got money. She's got prestige. She's got all kind of stuff. She can stay home and get her nails done. And get another massage and pick out another big diamond ring. But she hears about wisdom. And travel in those days was arduous. It was long. It, how many like to ride a donkey for a thousand miles? Even the nicest chariots did not have suspension like your car. You, and there were no nice paved roads like we got. I mean, you feel every, every jolt, every rut, every bump, and it goes on for 12 and 15 hour day after day after day after day. She, and I'm sure she traveled in the best of the day, but you understand, she could have stayed at home. But no, she wants this. And she traveled as long and as hard and as far as it took. Oh, are y'all with me now? Do you see any, any relevance today? Why isn't this place packed out tonight? Why isn't every church and every ministry that's preaching the Word of God, why aren't they full to the gills? Of people coming hungry going, I want to hear the wisdom of God. I want to know the will of God. Why? Because people are fools. They don't know what's valuable. They don't know what's precious. You got people that's across the road from a good church and won't get up 30 minutes early to go on Sunday morning. That's being a fool. But wise people. I said wise people. Oh, they'll get up early. They'll stay up late. They'll stand in line to get a seat. They'll fly all over the country. They'll drive all over the country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why? Hungry. Hungry. Saying, I got questions. Yeah. <laughs> God's got answers. Yeah. And I'm after them. Yeah. I come to get mine. Yeah. I come to get my wisdom. I come to get my understanding. Yeah. And what will happen? Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. They shall be. So man, she grilled him. She grilled him about everything she didn't understand, and he answered every question. 
And verse 3, when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he built. Yeah, now. Somebody says, what does one have to do with the other? Everything. God is the wisest. What about his house? What about what he's building right now? See, people have thought, well, I'd rather have wisdom than this old world's riches. Mm -mm. You're thinking wrong. Through the wisdom of God, you know how to appropriate and how to build the house and where to put everything. And how not to put that stuff in there, because that's not going to last three years. You'll know how to get this stuff. And how to put it, and how to wire it, and how to plumb it, and how to lay it out. She, how many understand the queen of Sheba had a nice pad herself? But she comes in and sees Solomon's place. She's used to finery. But she sees his place, and she goes... Oh, wow. The Bible said, we read in just a minute, said there was no breath left in her. She went, <gasps> looking at his stuff. And she didn't move, she didn't come out of a tent now. She's a queen. What enabled him to have such spectacular stuff? Not just money. I've seen people that had a lot of money had some of the ugliest stuff you ever saw. Money doesn't give you taste. <laughs> you can have tons of money and no taste, which is another, another way of saying what? No wisdom. To know what looks good with what. And you don't, don't get somebody else to tell you. <laughs> don't get somebody else to tell you what looks good to you. They might make a suggestion, but don't let somebody make all your decisions and tell you what looks good to you. you got the wisdom of God inside you, and God will show you and tailor things for you so the uniqueness of your tastes and wisdom is expressed. It'll be impressive, and you won't be cookie cutter, same as everybody else, in everything. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom. So when she saw all that, verse 4 keeps going. She saw the food on his table. Is there wisdom how to cook a meal? How to set a table? And the sitting of his servants. How many know there's a best way to do everything? And see, Lord help me get this out. I've talked to Phyllis about this many times. She... Uh, I don't think she's tired of hearing it, but I know she's heard it before. That God is helping us in this church. We are getting rid of this, well, that's good enough mentality. Oh, this, this sloppy, buy the cheapest thing and save the Lord some money. Like Brother Copeland said, when's he going to see all this money? People are saving for him. It's ridiculous. People do it because they're cheap and they're lazy. They do the cheapest thing and the quickest, easiest thing. It got nothing to do with saving the Lord money. Oh, friend, there is a way to do everything that glorifies God. Will you believe with me? Yeah. Will you pray about it? There is a way for the traffic to come in that glorifies God. There's a way to come in the doors. There's a way for the bathrooms to operate. There's a way for everything to work that glorifies God until people come in and go, Wow, man, I never thought of that. But we didn't either. But God already knew. And we said, Lord, we've got to have your wisdom on this. we got to have And he gave it to us. And we saw, this is the best way to do this. And this is the best way to do this. 
And how many believe every day and every week you ought to be getting some of that? This is a, be- this is a better way. It's a better way. And the smartest people on the planet can't figure it out in their heads. It's a gift. I said it's a gift of grace from God. Well, wi- wisdom permeated everything Solomon did. The way he set his table. The way he dressed. The way his servants dressed. The way they came in. The way they went out. There was an order and a flow. Is God wise? Can you see it in his creation? The way, uh, even in, in its fallen state under the curse, you still see so much order in the planet and in creation, don't you? God didn't just throw a bunch of stuff together and hope it worked. Say, so, well, that's good enough. Every time I say that, I think about Brother Kenneth Copeland. One of the first uh, gospel music projects, he, he sang some worldly stuff, but one of the first music of God that he ever recorded, he got some money and believed God, and he got in the studio, and he hired some musicians. He didn't have any of his own. And he, uh, they, they were working on it, and it was going late in the night. And if you've never done that kind of work, you don't know, but it, you know, doing the same thing for the 30th time, it can get old and it's getting late and you're getting tired, but Brother Kenneth wasn't satisfied with it. And he said, no. And so this fellow was playing the guitar and he was a hired musician. And finally the fellow said, oh, now that's just good enough for gospel music. Oh, brother. They said the steam came out of Brother Kenneth's ears. (laughs) And that guy was gone. Right then. And he's right. I said, he's right. If there's anywhere where you're going to spend more money, where you're going to work on it longer, where you're going to do it better, it ought to be in the gospel, in the things of God, with the church, with the ministry. The best of the best. And there's only one way we can do that. With the wisdom of God. Without it, you'll just waste money, and you'll waste time and effort, and it'll still be ugly. (laughs) How many of you can spend a million dollars and work for six months and have an ugly project? (laughs) You can. Oh, but by the wisdom of God, it'll flow. There's grace. It'll come together. It'll fit. You won't waste anything. And that's for you. In your personal life, in your home, in your business. There's a best way to make your bed. There's a best way to cook a meal. There's a best way to clean up after it. There's adjustments we can make and save ourselves whole days out of our week. Hours out of our day. And enjoy it more. So There's so much wasted time and wasted effort and wasted money. Just through foolishness and ignorance. When she saw, verse 4, the food on his table, the way his servants sat, the attendance of his ministers, their clothes, his cupbearers, their apparel, his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Or one translation said, There's no, she had, he lost her breath. See, Solomon thought, when I get up from doing my national duties and I go up to the house of the Lord, it ought to be in a manner that befits the glory of God, that now we're moving up from a high to, to a higher thing. And so his throne and his steps and the ascent and, and the, the, the circumstance and, and, and ceremony with which they did it. Can you see that we are suffering today from the rebellion of the 50s and 60s. Everything's common. Nothing's important. You don't dress up for anything. You don't try to do anything. You know, oh, I don't go for all that pomp and circumstance. Well, no, you don't want to be just showy. You don't want to do a bunch of stuff for no reason, but you do want to. Reach down on your insides and give God all the dignity. Oh, come on now, and do things with all the excellence that befits such a glorious God. And when you get a heart for it, He starts showing you how. And He starts giving you the, 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 the equipment and the ability and the resources with which you can. 
Oh, come on now. And this is not just for church now. You are a witness everywhere you are. At your shop, at your place. You can glorify God by the way you come to work in the morning. By the way you lay your tools out. Oh, come on now. Somebody needs to be hearing this. By, by the way you approach a project. And by the way you do it with the skill you do it with. The efficiency. And the, the, the spirit with which you do it. The way, let's say you sell something. You sell clothes. Or so, the way you meet somebody and greet them. The dignity with which you address them. The skill in which you, you answer their questions about your product. How many times you ever go somewhere and you know more about the product they're selling than they did? Yeah. That doesn't glorify God. Skillful, knowledgeable, understanding, grace. It all glorifies God. People leave impressed with you going, man, have you, have you ever talked to that salesperson over there? I've never seen a finer salesperson in my life. And then they find out you're a Christian. You're a faith person. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is a witness. Can you say amen? amen? Let's keep reading. She said to the king, It was a true report I heard in my own land of your acts and of your wisdom. I didn't believe it till I came, and my eyes saw it, and behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. I thought they were exaggerating, but they didn't tell a half of it. For you exceed the fame that I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are your servants that stand continually before you, and they get to hear this wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God which delighted in you and set you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God because God loved Israel to establish them forever and so he made you the king to do judgment and justice and she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents. A talent was about a hundred pound chunk of gold. You know, I, I thought it's funny because I don't know where you grew up, but in the South, you know, you hear somebody, uh, they, they say it in a negative way. Well, look at her. She come a sashaying in here like the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> Who does she think she is? The Queen of Sheba? Somebody calls you the Queen of Sheba, you better shout. Because here's a woman who knew what was important, who knew what was valuable, and I mean was willing to spend large money and travel to the ends of the earth. She got what she was looking for. She got her answers. What do you think happened when she got home? What do you think happened at their dinner table? What do you think happened in all the, I'm telling everything, everything in Sheba land came up to the standard of the glory of God. Everything come up. She said, no, 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 no. No, we used to do it that way. But let me tell you what I saw over at Solomon's house. Let me tell you the way they did that. Let me tell you how God showed him how to do that. And so everything came up. That's the way it's supposed to be with you. People around you, they see how you do it. They may not say a word. Next thing you look up, they do it like you do. And they're happier. Can you say amen? In closing, go with me to the book of Acts. I think it's closing. The book of Acts. The Bible called the Queen of Sheba the Southern Queen. <laughs> That's right. Matthew 12, 42 says she's the Queen of the South. And said she's going to rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it because she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And what he was saying is that there's a greater than Solomon here today. It was Jesus. And there's people who didn't even respect him. Didn't even receive him. And he said, she's going to judge you. Well, that means she's still alive. Right? And she's going to look at them and go, are you kidding me? <laughs> I rode in that old rough chariot for, 
you know, eight months, nine months, two years, whatever it took to get there, to hear Solomon, and here is Jesus, so much greater than Solomon, and you wouldn't listen to him? Wise people know what is valuable. Wise people know what is precious. Queen of the South. Queen of Sheba. Look with me in Acts. Let's see, where are you now? What chapter? Yeah, I know I didn't tell you. Uh, Let's see in the early part of the book here, about the fifth chapter. My, my. Let's not be in too big of a rush tonight. Can you, can you stay with me? I know we've taken a little extra time on these things, but I, I told you, I'm, I'm, for me, I'm charting new territory. And we're believing God for each step of this. And we want to not just hear about it, but we want to receive it. Right? And do it. In the book of Acts, there is the account, well, I'm not ready to go to Acts, that's what the deal is. Go to Ephesians, please. Thank you, Lord. I don't think it'd take a whole lot longer here, but I don't want to be rushed. I want to finish up here. How can you become wiser? How can you become wise? Can you become wiser? Yes. Is it up to us to get it? Yes. Yeah. You got a hunger for it. Amen. Got a desire for it. Yeah. Cry after it. Yeah. Seek it. Yeah. Ask for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Got to watch your words. Not just be a motor mouth. Got to be teachable. Yeah. Love instruction. Even correction. Yeah. And rebuke. Right? Yeah. And you must walk with wise people. Be willing to go long distances. Be willing to be inconvenienced. To be around wisdom greater than, you, than what you have. Right? Here we see in uh, Ephesians a phrase and a prayer that he taught us to pray. A lot of you know it. But remember, Ephesians 1, he's praying Verse 17, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The what? Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Spirit. We quoted this, but I'm going to read it to you again. In the book of Isaiah, he talks about how that the spirit of wisdom is on us. Remember the spirit of uh, counsel, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, that he makes us of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Say, Say it out loud, spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. wisdom. Now in the book of Acts, you remember the miracle of the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. Right? And how that the whole city was moved when this man was healed and raised up. And in chapter 4, the leaders of the land tried to... uh, quiet this and and quench this and Peter verse 8 Acts 4 8 he stood up filled with the Holy Ghost and got to preaching and he told them there wasn't salvation verse 12 there is salvation in, in no other name none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now let's just stop right here if you if you read the whole account did did he speak eloquently 
Oh, man, I mean, he's quoting Scripture, and the words are rolling, rolling off of his tongue in wisdom and in power. Where did he get his degrees? Peter didn't go to seminary. Where did he get this? I mean, he's speaking like a powerhouse. He, he, he's, uh, he might not be using big words, but he's speaking eloquently. And he's saying exactly, he, he's using the right word to express it. And he's saying it at the right place, in the right way, at the right time. And I mean, the power is just knocking people off their seat. Including the educated leaders. He's, he's preaching and talking and they're going... And they're the ones in the big high seat looking down on him. He's a fisherman. They got four degrees. What does it say, verse 13? When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that what? They had been with Jesus. You walk with the wise, you become wise. You walk with the faith, full of faith, you become full of faith. You walk with the righteous and those full of truth, you become full of truth. You walk with the bold, The miracle workers, you become the bold. And the miracle workers got nothing to do with where you went to school. Now this is not all. Go with me back to Deuteronomy. And as you're turning back there, say spirit of wisdom. wisdom. Say it out loud again, spirit of wisdom. And singers and players, come on up and and get ready. Spirit of wisdom. It's not something you just learn with your head. The spirit of wisdom comes in you. God puts his wisdom and his spirit of his wisdom inside you. The spirit of of the Lord shall rest upon him, the scripture said. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Notice he keeps saying the spirit of it, the spirit of it, the spirit of it comes on you and comes in you. Now in Deuteronomy 34, Deuteronomy, 34. The Bible says this. Deuteronomy 34. Verse 7. Deuteronomy 34, 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Can you still be in good shape as you get older and older? Oh, yeah, you're not 23, and you won't run like you did when you're 23, but you have not dried out, and you are not weak, and you have not lost your faculties. He climbed a mountain to die. And God, now get this, God had to tell him it was time to die. Now here's something that shocks a lot of people, but you don't have to be sick to die. Some people, bless their hearts, they try to look so wise and go, well, if you never got sick, how would you ever die? (laughs) Easy. Your body is like a glove. And your spirit's like the hand in the glove. You pull the hand out of the glove... What can you do to make it quit moving? (laughs) 
Without the hand in the glove, the glove is dead. No movement. Spirit leaves the body, the body's dead. Said, verse 8, the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, so the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The Spirit of... He was, he was what? Full of the Spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. Now this, this didn't happen just overnight. He had served with him for a long time. But then when Moses laid his hands upon him, and the Bible said the spirit of wisdom came inside him in a stronger way than it had before. Spirit of wisdom. Say it out loud, spirit of wisdom. Stand up on your feet, please. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's just pray in the spirit, son. Lift up our voices to God and give him glory. Oh, stokele bleende panasakate brady as doce. Vale blemene and the beige de go no pa para and brange nadi a dash. Oh, vide a maricro. Hale ble bushati vitechi. Oh, fairy grace deviant mast over no don't jan de la basta. Oh, so sere grace dia jedevad banalak sonde. Brage di gediviad vaston te velambrande. Leve and berembran son son de gondaya. Lane gie di esti. Lane di esi e jeti asata. Jora, brasso, sogo, taro, brezo, vezo, bando, dezo. Disto, Tazdo, Praisdo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're hungry. We seek and desire your wisdom. Oh, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want us to do something, but I want us to do it very specific way. Now, please listen to the instructions and don't. Ignore them. If you are in full-time ministry, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying you think you got a call on your life and one day you want to be in full. I mean, you're full-time teaching and preaching, pastoring, traveling, missionary. You're full-time in ministry. Right now, I want you to hold up your hand. Hallelujah. And those that have raised your hand, if you'd like for us to lay hands on you, I want you to step out and come down to the front right here. Hallelujah. Everybody else, don't be concerned. Now, you're not going to get left out. But just a specific way to do this. Full time. Teaching, preaching, pastoring, missionary. Oh, thank you, Lord. If that's not you, now don't, don't, don't come. Don't, don't come under false pretenses God has ministry for you oh thank you Lord 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 reach your hands out toward these ministers those of you up here just get in a receiving mode get, get quiet 
and get in a receiving mode. Father, in the name of Jesus, we hunger and thirst after your wisdom. We ask for an increased, increased measure of the manifestation of the wisdom of God in Jesus' name. Phyllis, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom, O Hostia Deneshti, Edebelason Namayanchi, the spirit of wisdom, O Ferimbrayshati, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of wisdom, increase, increase, O the spirit of wisdom, increase. The spirit of wisdom increase. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom increase. 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 Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, the spirit of God's great wisdom. Increase, 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 and the unfolding of his plan. Oh, hosti kele adeshti. In the naham pantile non ton pala asdanda aniti. The spirit of wisdom. Increase. 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 Ele prosto. In the name of the Most High. The spirit of wisdom. Increase, 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 increase. Ah, de lo pomo mai sante. Increase. The spirit of wisdom increase. Increase. From Paranishti. The spirit of wisdom. Ah, yeah. Ah, ya pashti. In the name of Jesus. The hapola cloma onti paenetia te pashi. Yeah, yeah. O stobeji. The spirit of wisdom increase. The spirit of wisdom. O sto on te koe. O sto on te koe. Increase. 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 Hale pros deal. The spirit of wisdom increase. Increase, increase on terra caste, eti fele beste, o teo hostoce o tewa ashta, increase. Halate, endivanapa, the spirit of wisdom, increase. Lompo en traste, linte me prasha, aramponeriti, longe porate. Soul a plajada increase. Avia namasta, the spirit of wisdom increase. Ha, doi oshi, increase, increase. The spirit of wisdom increase, increase. O home prashti, ilev le mekar and branch donian de buja da fela. Offer the compare and branch on the last. Everybody praise God. Give glory to God. Oh, so so bedi and the master son. Kim, they. Hallelujah. Oh, stovin and a la clomo mosha. In the old mosa son de on the badge. Itiva de opo shidi. The spirit of wisdom. Increase. 
increase. O e hatri, o e hotro, o e hati, e gredici, endevedi, alevloso, o ferebresti, i te acesti, o te adosciotto, alemblende zante condo eneste. Hallelujah! 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is the way it came up in my spirit to do this. Those others that say, I'm, I'm hungering for more wisdom, I'm hungering for more for the call of God on my life, you raise your hand right now. You raise your hand. Now those of you that I just laid hands on, this is what I saw in my spirit, you turn around and begin touching these people that's got their hands up right now. Those of you that I just laid hands on, you reach and begin to touch where you see a hand raised. Begin to touch them and say, increase. 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 Close your eyes. If you got your hand up now, if, you, if you're the one laying hands, don't close your eyes. You look and you reach. You may have to walk a few steps and put your hand on somebody's, on their head and say, increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Everybody that I just laid hands on now, you lay hands on somebody else with their hand up. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Say, well, I wanted Brother Keith to lay it. No, I'm not the giver of wisdom. You want to do what he said. And the main thing is you just believe you receive. That's it. You just believe you receive. You just believe you receive. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of wisdom. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge and understanding. Oh, makes me of quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord. I'm going to minister it once again now. Close your eyes. Increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Spirit of wisdom, increase. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you that I laid hands on, you see hands still up. Make your way around. Whoever's close to you, touch them. And say, increase. The Bible said he was full of the spirit of wisdom. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Singers and band, raise your hands. Spirit of wisdom, increase. Increase. Oh, shokole blende panasafadia. Ej dien de gongo famare kreis dien in bakalavandia. Elis, elis, osto, ote, ojde, ajde. 
Oh, hallelujah. If you treasure these things, and if you value them, if they are precious to you, and you hold close in your spirit, and you say, I have received increase of the spirit of wisdom. You look to this wisdom. You inquire of the spirit of wisdom. You seek. Then it shall come. Not all in a day. Not all in a month. But it shall come. Here a little. There a little. Line upon line. Line upon line. And then there shall come more. And more. Some of it will seem small. But don't despise it. For it's something you did not know, something you were not aware of. Then, as you yield to the spirit of wisdom, the increase will be more pronounced, more pronounced. And as you give yourself wholly to it, your profiting shall appear before all. People will begin to say, how did you think of that? Where did you see that? And you didn't see it anywhere in the earth. You didn't hear anybody else say it. It was the wisdom of the Lord revealed to you on your bed in the nighttime, revealed to you at the breakfast table, revealed to you as you drove in your car, and you, see, you saw it, and you knew it, and you understood it, and all you had to do was do it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, His wisdom flows through me. His understanding flows through me. Oh, He shows me His way. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're just going to go like this in the presence of the Lord. Talk it. Think it. Expect it. His wisdom flows through me. His wisdom enlightens the eyes of my heart and understanding. He's given to me the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom, the excellent spirit, is on me and in me, illumines my mind, anoints my thinking, guides my hands, directs my decisions, makes known to me all I need to know. The unction of the Holy One causes me to know all things. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Greater is He that is in me. Everybody say, Greater is He that is in me. I'm so glad. Greater is He that is in me. Oh, than He that is in the world. Oh, His wisdom. His wisdom is in me. Oh, yes, it is. His wisdom is in me. His wisdom is in me. That's greater than he that is in the world. You're dismissed as you say. Greater.